Hello students and welcome to another calculus video. In this video we're going to be looking at the connections between f, f prime, and f double prime, especially how they can look on calculator actor questions and multiple choice questions. So let's get started. So if you haven't already done so, make sure you grab your calculator for this question. What I want us to do is um, we're going to be given a function cosine of the natural log x. And that's going to be the first derivative of a twice differentiable function. Honestly, this point of being a twice differentiable function, while it's important, you don't necessarily need to make note of that as you're making your most of your assumptions throughout this. What the twice differentiable function means is that you can take the derivative at all points um, over the domain of the function, okay? Now, what I also want us to take note of is that right here we have f prime okay so with f prime of x we know that we're given the first derivative and we're gonna have to make connections with between the function and its second derivative so here in part a we're on the interval 0 to 10 and we want to find the x value or the x values where f of x has a relative maximum okay so where f of x has a relative maximum and remember we're given f prime so we want to make our justification and what i like to do here is i'd like to make my justification first so what is a relative maximum well that's where we're going from increasing to decreasing okay so that means that f prime so relative maximum when f prime changes from so increasing to decreasing means that f prime is changing from positive to negative so from positive to negative okay and so then uh, without even looking at the graph yet we're going to look in a second so which occurs at and then I'm going to come over here to my graph and I've already graphed it here. And so what I want to do is, OK, so when is this changing from positive to negative? So if I'm looking at it, it looks like I've got um, an X value here where it's changing from negative to positive and an X value here where it's changing from positive to negative. What I don't want to focus on is this point over here close to one, because that isn't actually going to be a, a spot where that's a maximum of f prime but we want to talk about f so that's why we make our our justification first so we can really focus in on what we're talking about what we're given and what we want to find and what's the connection between those things all right so what i really want is this point where it's changing from positive to negative okay and i'm already going from zero to ten so i'm going to go menu um, and i'm going to go analyze graph and i want to find the zero and i want to find the zero there okay so we're given this value and um, it's giving me 4.81. Let me see if I can extend that a little bit. All right, so I'm getting 4.8105. So I'm gonna, I'm going to say, okay, 4.811, a 4.810. It honestly doesn't really matter. So we're going to come back over here, and it says which occurs when x equals 4.8. One, one. I like to round the fives up, but honestly, as long as you go to three decimal places, you'll be fine. Honestly, if you go to four decimal places, you'll be even better. So moving on to our next question on the interval zero to 10, we want to find values where f of x is a relative minimum. Okay, so again, I'm going to make my justification here. So what's the justification for when f of x is a relative minimum given what we're given? So we're given f prime. So what's the connection between those? Well, we have a relative minimum when f prime changes from negative to positive, which occurs at x equals, and let's see when that's going to occur. So I can see it happening over here, and uh, so I just want to grab that real quick. So I'm going to find that zero window, or sorry, analyze graph zero, and I'm just going to go backwards real quick. All right, there we go. And it looks like a 0 0.20788. So when x equals 0 0.208, and we're good to go. Now, the reason for that is because f prime changes from negative to positive. So you can put the justification second, or you can put it first like I did here. And now our final question is on the interval zero to 10, find the X value or the X values where F of X is a point of inflection. So F of X has a point of inflection. You wanna think about, okay, when do we have a point of inflection given F prime? So F of X has a point of inflection 
when f prime of x has a relative extrema, which occurs at, all right? So we know f of x is going to have a point of inflection when f prime has a relative extrema, either a relative maximum or a relative minimum, all right? So we can see from our graph that we have two of those happening. Actually, what I want to do is I want to zoom in really quick here because I can see two of these happening. So um, as I'm looking at it, I can see here that I can see here that I have a minimum over there on the left side and a maximum up there, kind of like in the middle. So I want to find that minimum value and that maximum value. So I'm going to go window uh, trace. And what I want to do is analyze graph and I'm going to find a minimum first. So let's find that minimum. And so I get the that value point zero four three two one, and then I want to find the maximum. So menu analyze graph maximum, and just looks like that one's going to just be at one. So that's just going to be x equal to one. Okay, and the reason for that is because we're just looking for those relative extrema. So which occurs at x equals zero point zero four three, and x equals one. What I want you guys to note is like, I'm not doing any um, arithmetic here. I'm not taking derivatives. I'm making the connections between F, F prime and F double prime. All right. So as I'm going through here, I'm not graphing anything on my piece of paper. In fact, in calculus, you never need to put a graph down onto your piece of paper. That's just wasting time. You only need to answer the question. The question's asking, okay, where does that have a point of inflection? Where's the maximums? Where are the minimums? And you have to make the connections based off of what you're given. As long as you do those things, you give me a point, you give me an X value and you make your justifications properly, you have answered the question and you're good to go to move on. This is all you need to show as you're moving through these pre-response questions. All right, so now we're on to our next question and we're looking on the interval between zero and 10. And we have a, a graph that we're going to be given. So G prime of X is sine of X on X plus two. So we're gonna to wanna to graph that. All right, and actually working with the window a little bit, here is the, the graph that I have, okay? And we have to go back to the question. We wanna say, okay, how many relative minimums are there? Well, when are we gonna have relative minimums given G prime? So relative minimum, that's gonna be like this. And so that's when we're going from decreasing to increasing. Okay, that's when you're gonna have relative minimum. So that's when your G prime, when our derivative is gonna go from negative to positive. So how many times is that happening? So on the, on, from between zero and 10, how many times is it going from negative to positive? And it looks like it only happens right here because here that's a zero. So that's outside of our interval. This one right here, that's going from positive to negative. This one right here is going from negative to positive. So that's a one. And then this one over here is positive to negative. So that's, that would be a maximum. So we only answer when are we going into minimums, relative minimums, and that's gonna be our answer B here. All right, moving on to our next question. Um, the derivative of g prime is continuous and has exactly two zeros. Okay, so I'm gonna just mark off that these are continuous and that we have two zeros. So we have selected values of g prime. Um, and if we're saying that the domain is a set of all real numbers, so it's going from negative infinity to positive infinity, then g is decreasing on which of the following intervals? Okay, so g is decreasing on which of the following intervals? So we want to make note that, okay, we're, we have G prime here. This is G prime here. Okay. So it is exactly two zeros. Nothing else is changing here. We've already notated it. So when is G decreasing when we're given G prime? Well, G is decreasing when G prime is less than zero when it's negative. Okay. So when is it negative? Well, it's negative here. Okay. Since we have only two zeros at all those other points, since those point to positive, it's always gonna be positive, um, less than negative two and greater than negative two. So when is it decreasing? When is G decreasing in between negative two and positive two only? So that's gonna be answer choice A. All right, moving on to our next question here. We have the second derivative of the function is given by F double prime of X is X times X minus A times X minus B squared. So we have the graph of f double prime here. 
And we want to know for what values of x does the graph of f prime have a relative maximum? So what is the connection between f prime and f double prime where we have a, a relative maximum? So again, since we're only making one jump, it really doesn't matter since we're going from basically a function to its first derivative. So when do we have a relative maximum from the first derivative? It's where f double prime in this case is going to go from positive to negative because you're going to go because the graph's going to go from increasing to decreasing. So where in this graph up here are we going from positive to negative? So right here, it looks like it's going from positive to negative. And then um, actually this goes from positive to positive. So that's not going to be a spot. So we only have one point and that's going to be a only. All right. So now I'm going to move over here to our next question. So if h of x is a twice differentiable function, um, where h of x is less than zero. So remember, what does that mean? That just means it's going to be negative for all values of x. Then what values does the graph of g of x have a relative maximum if g prime is this function? All right, so let's actually go and figure out, okay, what is this asking us to find? What do we need to answer? So where, what values does the graph of g of x have a relative maximum? Okay, so g of x has a relative maximum. So we're given g prime. So g of x is a relative maximum when? So when does g of x has a relative maximum? And if you're thinking, okay, g of x has a relative maximum when g prime goes from positive to negative, go ahead and make that note because you are exactly correct. Okay, so now all we need to do is figure out, okay, when is this going to go from positive to negative? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a sign chart. So I'm going to take this nine minus x squared. I'm going to solve for x. So I'm going to get two values. I want to get x equals um, positive and negative three. So when I make my sign chart for g prime, I know that it's going, I'm going to have zeros. I'm going to have critical points of positive and negative three. And I'm not really worried about h of x. I know h of x is always going to be negative, which will come in handy in a second. So I'm going to put in negative and positive three here. Okay, so now I'm going to pick points in between my intervals. So let's go with like negative five. So nine minus negative five squared, that's going to be a negative times a negative. So I want to get a negative times a negative because h of x is always going to be negative here. Okay, so I want to get negative times a negative, And what happens is this comes out to be positive. Now I'm going to choose a value between negative three and positive three. So uh, I'm going to choose zero. So nine minus zero is going to get a positive value. And then uh, h of x is going to be negative no matter what, because we know up here, it's always going to be negative. So positive times a negative, I'm going to get a negative value. Now, finally, a value greater than three, I'm going to use five here. So nine minus five squared, that's going to be a negative value. And then times a negative, this is going to turn into a positive. So I need to answer the question, right? I haven't answered the question. I've done the work for the question, but I haven't answered it. When are we going to get a relative max when we're going from positive to negative, which is only happening right here when X is negative three. So when, are, when is that going to be an option? Well, that's going to be option D for my answers. All right. And we have one question remaining here. And this question is actually going to be probably one of the more difficult ones where you actually have to think about these connections very deeply. OK, so let's go ahead and get started on it where we're given a table of function um, where we're given a table of values here for a function. We know it's twice differentiable, so we know it's continuous everywhere. Again, twice differentiable just means that we know it's continuous across two derivatives. And so we're given here where it is f of x. And we want to say, okay, which of these statements is true um, if f of x has only one zero in between negative three and positive three, okay? Um, the other thing we're going to make an assumption of, even though it's not stated here, is that um, this function, as we're going from 10 to 8 to 2 to negative 13, that all the values in between are going to be in between like 10 and 8, or it's going to be in between 8 and 2. All right, so we're just going to make that assumption. It's not clearly stated anywhere, but um, just to clarify this question about how you're actually supposed to tackle it, um, where you're going to actually be given this on a test, it would be more clearly stated about what's happening in between those values. So here in part one it says f prime of x is less than zero in between the interval negative three to three. So what does that mean? Well, that means f of x 
the function is decreasing. So f of x is decreasing. And is that happening? So 10 to 8, yep, that's going down 2. 8 to 2, yep, that's going down 6. 2 to negative 13, yep, that's going down negative 15. Um, and so it's all decreasing, which means that the function is negative. F prime is going to be negative because it, every single one of these points is going lower and lower. So, yep, that is true. Now we're going to say f of x is 0 between 1 and 3. So right here we're going to assume that there is a 0. Now is that true? Well, we know we're crossing 2 and negative 13. So we know um, that we are going to be crossing a 0 here. So we do know that that's going to be happening. And the only reason we know that that's happening is because this is a twice differentiable function. Since it is continuous, you are going to have continuity between 2 and negative 13. You are going to have to cross 0 at some point between those values. So, yep, that is going to be true. And then finally, the last statement says that the second derivative is greater than 0 on interval between negative 3 and 3. So, what does this mean? Well, this means that f of x here is concave up. Okay. Um, and how are we going to determine that based off of just some? table of values. Well, in order to determine concavity, we need to look at the rate of the rate. So we have the rates here, right? So this is going down negative two. This is going down negative six. This one's going down negative 15, right? So what is the rate between those going down? So those that first rate gives me the first derivative. So what is the second derivative doing? So um, this one is going down, so it's decreasing. So it's going down four, and this one is decreasing and is going down um, negative nine, okay? So we are decreasing. So since the second derivative, so that second rate is decreasing that means it is negative not positive that means that we are concave down so this last point is going to be not true so our only answers that come out to be true are b the first and second one all right and that's going to conclude this video and this lesson Hopefully you do make some more of these connections between the function, its first derivative and the second derivative. Very important concepts. Literally every single question when it's related to derivatives are just like these connections between first, second derivatives, okay? So as long as you make these connections and you're good on those um, pieces as you're, as you're going into um, our next steps with integration, you're gonna be golden. All of this is just going to come make deeper sense and deeper meaning as you continue to work on it. Of course, if you do need any help, please reach out to me. I'm Mr. Hernandez, and this is Mr. Hernandez Teaches.